السلام عليكم السلام عليكم ايفريون ان شاء الله some other folks will be joining us uh, for those of you uh, that I haven't got to meet uh, my name is Shane Atkinson uh, I'm the Muslim chaplain at Elon University um, it's it's really beautiful to get to spend some time with you all today I was telling uh, brother Usama that I I'm familiar with your organization I visited your website before I'd ever spoke to Osama before I'd ever before we knew each other, uh, I've admired the work that y'all are doing, and I feel like it's important work. And I hope that uh, Allah blesses you for the service that you're doing uh, and the care that you're providing for each other. It's a beautiful model for people to see. Um, so I'm I'm a fan. Before I ever got to uh, even speak with uh, Brother Usama or be invited today, um, I, I know that. Uh, Brother Osama mentioned a few people may know me. There was a, a documentary uh, called Redneck Muslim, and th I wanted to just name that, that um, uh, I'm from the Deep South. I hope everyone can understand my accent. I know you all are from a part of the country where there's some thick accents, too. My wife and I used to watch this program where they were hunting alligators in Louisiana, and they were speaking English, but they would have subtitles at the bottom. My wife didn't understand anything they were saying. I, I could understand everything they were saying. I used to spend summers in Louisiana. Um, so hopefully we don't have to add subtitles later. Hopefully my my uh, my Deep South accent is not too thick. I'm trying trying to enunciate, but that that documentary, uh, I don't consider myself a redneck, you know, uh, but I'm definitely from that from that background. And I didn't make this documentary. There were some people approached me about making it and the whole point that we were trying to get across is that um, how can we move beyond demonizing uh, each other? How can we move beyond uh, just saying, dependent, regardless of what side of the aisle or what background you are, how can we move beyond saying, if we could just get rid of those people, everything would be okay. Because this is really a trap of our egos to think that, uh, if we could just fix other people, then we, then we're, then everything's fine. We're, we're really letting ourselves off the hook. So trying to balance, trying to model the work that you're doing, standing up for what's right, standing up for justice. And at the same time, taking a really hard look in the mirror and taking ourselves to account, not letting ourselves off the hook. So beyond the comfort zone was, uh, when Brother Usama said, what are we going to talk about? I don't know exactly what we're going to talk about, but um, if we had to list the things that people are carrying on their hearts and, and on their shoulders right now, uh, we don't have enough time to, to list a fraction of the things that people are struggling with. So how can we better support each other? It can't just be that uh, folks that are mental health providers or folks that are chaplains or, you know, it, it can't just be those folks that are helping to care for each us, uh, care for us. So just, just like what Muslim space is modeling, how can we better care for each other? How can we better uh, be part of a community that supports each other and helps each other be healthy? So this uh, hadith, kept coming to me in this regard. Um, the prophet, peace be upon him, uh, said nothing afflicts a Muslim of hardship or nor illness, nor anxiety, nor sorrow, nor harm, nor distress, nor even the pricking of a thorn, but that God will expiate their sins by it. So like many of you, I've normally heard this hadith in, in the context of someone being sick. Like maybe I'm sick, things are hard and maybe someone mentions like, I know, I know you're physically ill, but you know, inshallah, you have, your sins are falling away. But when you look at this hadith, I think it's really from a different perspective. It's 
powerful, uh, powerful for us to remember this hadith is naming that Allah is aware of our struggles, that Allah's knowledge is with us, that, that someone sees us, Allah knows what we're going through. But the really amazing thing about this hadith for me personally is that Allah mentions anxiety and stress and sorrow as real legitimate hardships and struggles. So, so many people, they minimize these things. But here in this hadith, uh, Allah is validating this anxiety, the stress, the sorrow that so many people are feeling. These are real hardships. These are real struggles. And quite often we're not merciful with ourselves. You know, the things that we, the way we relate to ourselves inside our head, we would never say these things to people. Um, and you know, it's all through our tradition, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, with Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. In the messenger of God, there's an excellent model for you and whoever has hope in God and for salvation on the last day and therefore remembers God much. And Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, for we've sent you, O Prophet, as none other than a mercy to all the people of the world. So it's a primary teaching, mercy. It's primary to our tradition. Even traditionally, uh, there's, there's a hadith that many people will learn as their first hadith for the prophet, peace be upon him, said, those who do not show mercy to those on earth will not be shown mercy by the one who's in the heavens. Uh, and I think sometimes for, we forget we're on earth too. You know, we need to be merciful with ourselves. We need to be merciful with each other. So this is encouraged by the, the prophet, peace be upon him. We're, we're pointed toward this in the, by by, uh, by a lot in the Quran, but why don't we do more of this? Why aren't we more merciful to each other, more merciful to ourselves? And it makes me think there's a story uh, by Mullah, uh, about Mullah Nasruddin. And I'm not sure if everyone's familiar, depending on the culture, they, he may be called Juha or Nasruddin Hoja or Mullah Nasruddin, but kind of this holy fool, where there's kind of jokes, stories, then they normally have some moral teaching, right? But there's not, I've never really seen commentaries. So a lot of these stories, people take away different meanings from these stories. But there's one in this context that I, that I think of, of where Nasruddin was in his backyard and he was looking for something and his neighbor came and asked what he was doing. And Nasruddin said, I'm looking for my keys. I lost my keys. So the neighbor's helping him look in the backyard and they look for like 30 minutes. And the neighbor, you know, starting to get impatient, a little frustrated. And he said, Nasruddin, where exactly do you remember having your keys last? And Nasruddin said, oh, in the front yard. So the neighbor said, well, why are we looking in the backyard if you lost your keys in the front yard. And Nasruddin said, well, there's more light in the backyard. So it's easier to look in the backyard. So in this context, one of the meanings for me from this story or this joke is a lot of times we go where it's easier for us emotionally. Uh, even though we, we may know that it's not the most beneficial uh, way for us to proceed, uh, confronting difficult situations uh, may be something that we want to avoid and we may take an easier route and try to uh, uh, ignore problems or run away from situations. So part of us being there for each other is uh, not dismissing that there's, that there's an issue, you know, being honest with ourselves. Uh, even just looking as we, so we can look, make some parallels with like looking at the attributes of God. So in classical books of theology, they'll often start by just naming like God exists, God is, and go and then go into greater detail. But uh, 
you know, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, he's with you wherever you are. So part of us helping each other is just to be, just to show up and be there for somebody who's suffering. And this can be challenging for us because it really hurts to see someone suffer. So a lot of us will go straight to trying to cheer somebody up or we may try to change the subject. But generally that has to do with what we need. That has to do with us trying to distance ourselves from that uncomfortable situation. So part of how we can support each other is to show up and be present and, and see, see what the person is going through. And this is, this is like a metaphor, like Allah is always with us. Allah is always with us no matter what we go through. And we may be able, we, we can turn away from God, but our existence is borrowed from God. So there's a connection with God, even if we're oblivious to it. Um, but it, it can be a real struggle for human beings to be generous and give uh, their attention and their time to be of service to each other. Another attribute uh, in this conversation is that Allah is the all hearing. So Allah hears our words, our thoughts, our feelings, but for us to be there for each other, for us to support each other, it, it takes a lot of effort for us to really hear each other. It takes a lot of effort for us to be able to feel where someone's coming from. And this takes a certain amount of maybe emotional intelligence to, to work on this, to get better at this. Um, because so many of us, uh, we're, we're starved for attention ourselves. You know, I've never heard anyone complain about they've received too much love in their life. So a lot of times uh, we're listening, but part of, part of what's going on while we're listening, we're waiting for our chance to get to share and get to speak. Um, so just understanding that, recognizing that in yourself. Uh, and putting that, putting your need to the side temporarily is, can be very helpful when it comes to hearing people, really feeling where they're coming from. We also know that God has the attribute of being the all-seeing. God knows what we're going through at all times. So when we're sitting with our community, when we're sitting with our friend who's struggling, and we try to uh, prematurely cheer them up, or we, we try to change the subject, we're not really allowing ourselves to see that person. So just to name that, this sounds like this is very difficult for you. Just to name, like, it sounds like you're having a rough time. That can really help someone feel like there's someone there that understands them, that, that they're not all alone in their time of need. And sometimes it's, it's, it's harder to do this for people that, uh, that are similar to us. You know, maybe we, we can push each, other, push each other's buttons, you know, or, or maybe we can be judgmental. These people, this person doesn't practice exactly like me. Um, but, you know, it's a delusion to, to, to think that way. The, this community of believers, it's not only that Allah is merciful to the believers, but uh, God also extends, you know, this compassion, this uh, arahim, because, because they're believers. And what so many people jump to is, is maybe praying for somebody. Um, instead of doing these doing these tasks instead of just being present with someone, right? Listening to them, being aware of your own, maybe none of you are, are, are have any of this. Th these are things I've definitely discovered within myself, you know, about myself. So being able to at least temporarily put my need to share to the side so that I can have all the bandwidth free to be able to hear what this person's telling me so they, they can feel like someone 
is with them, someone hears them. And to name what I'm, what I'm seeing, to acknowledge what they're going through instead of trying to cheer them up because it makes me uncomfortable. Um, so after doing that for each other, we, we have to pray for each other, you know? So often as a chaplain, you, you will see people, they can't, they can't handle uh, being around people that, that, are, that are struggling. And they'll try to pray as a way to kind of get out of the situation, to get out of the room. But we don't want to just uh, throw a hadith at someone just to kind of get out of the situation. After we've sat with them, uh, we have to pray for each other. It's very, very powerful. Uh, makes me uh, think of the story with the, uh, the sheikh is visiting uh, a sick person and he goes and uh, he, 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 he sits with the person, he listens, kind of what we talk, talked about, like he listens to what's going on with the person. And then before he leaves, he, he makes do off with the person, he prays for the person. And one of the family members is uh, extremely upset, extremely upset that you know, my family member is extremely ill and then you come here and then you just offer some words, you know, like what are, what are words going to do? How can words help the situation? So the Sheikh said, yeah, you know, I wouldn't really expect you to understand how words could be beneficial because you're, you're obviously an ignorant donkey. This person didn't like that. So uh, their face started turning red and their blood pressure just kept rising. Their heart beat, their heart was beating faster and faster. The pattern of their breathing became sh more shallow. And so the Sheikh said, you know, if, if a couple of words, you know, ignorant donkey, if say an ignorant donkey can make your face turn red and make you start breathing heavy, they make your heart start pounding. They make you angry. Who, who are we to say that, that kind words, beautiful words can't help someone, can't help someone in a positive way, especially when these words are connected to Allah. So it's powerful. We have to pray for each other. You know, it, we don't, we don't want to underestimate the power of praying for each other. So inshallah, maybe over the next week, we could just try to take one of the points that we talked about, about being trying to sh be present with someone, about actually listening to someone, about seeing them. And inshallah, we could apply it to our lives as we interact with so many people that have anxiety, that are stressed out. Hopefully we can be this for each other. So inshallah, we can always return to the intention of trying to do what's pleasing to God and of being of service to humanity. And what, what are the things that we could offer? We could be, we could be present with our family. We could be present with our friends. We could listen with the intention of trying to feel where the other person is coming from. We can acknowledge the situation that our family or our friend or our community member is going through. We can try to reflect this mercy and compassion into the world. So uh, I want to offer uh, a prayer. Ya Allah, please help us be of service to those that we love. Ya Allah, please help us go beyond our comfort zones and support and pray for those that we love. Ya Allah, let us be aware that love is wanting the best for people rather than wanting to get the best out of people. And Ya Allah, uh, help us to love those that we struggle to love and give us tawfiq. Thank you all so much.